it's me and I know you guys have not seen me in a while since um, the loss of my daughter which was April the 17th no April the 7th um, that was last month and first of all I want to thank you ladies so much for your love your condolences and all of your prayers um, so where am I right now um, I had to deal with a whole bunch of things as far as with my daughter passing away I mourned a long time and I'm still still dealing with it you know sometimes it hit me like I'm supposed to be pregnant right now but um, I'm just gonna give you I'm just gonna hurry up and just breeze through of what I went through and what I'm going through and what I'm going to be going to do um, within the next two weeks so um, you guys know I lost my daughter due to an incompetent cervix and I didn't really go into details last time so I'm gonna try to hurry it up this time um, bottom line, um, I had I had a cold, um, and I think it was I don't know if it's because I was taking too many showers or what, but also I, I had like a constipation, and I felt like that triggered on contractions. And then when I went to go see my doctor, he showed me that I basically funneled to my stitch, and he saw the contractions, and he said this is not good to go back home and lay down. I went back home, lay down, but the contractions kept coming. I called it in. They told me to come to the hospital. I went to the hospital, and um, they stopped the contractions. They gave me some type of medication to stop the contractions, so I thought everything was going pretty good. The next thing you know, um, I think three days in while I was in the hospital, I went to the bathroom, and I, I kept peeing like back to back, back to back, back to back. And I just felt a lot of pressure down here. And also I, I could see like my my stomach was rising again. And I was really afraid of that because I remember that happening with my prior loss with Melody last September. And what ended up happening was um, my water broke. So my water broke. I'm freaking out. I'm going crazy. And bottom line, the doctor comes in. Now, I'm crying, and this this other doctor comes in. They check me. I'm screaming and crying and crying because I'm like, my water just broke. And they checked and said I hadn't dilated or anything, and that my cervix was still closed. Now, I remind you, I had that stitch on. So, I'm crying because now my baby don't have no water in there. What's going on? And the doctor basically said, look, you can still carry full term because the, the, the water that the baby's in is actually urine. And if the baby can produce more urine, the baby will be fine. So she, you know, um, bottom line of contractions kept coming to the point where um, I was basically trying to hide the contractions. They had to put me back up to the little monitor. I wanted them to take it off because I did not want them to tell me that I had to deliver her. I tried to hide the contractions as long as I could. I, even the doctor knew that I was hiding those contractions. So anyway, the contractions started. Next thing you know, um, blood started to come and... Um, the contractions got just unbearable. They had to page my doctor, in which it was so bad, I was like, page the other doctor. So in, in order for me to deliver her, they had to basically take the stitch off. In which, um, once he took the stitch off, once she took the stitch off, I was four centimeters dilated or whatever, and all you needed to be was six, because I was only 20 weeks anyway. So I had to deal with basically um, an epidural, um, they had to drug me up and I ended up delivering my daughter and she lived for five hours and she passed away. She was born on the 6th, she passed away on the 7th. After that, I mean, it was just a, a so for real experience. I couldn't believe that I was going through it again within an eight month period of time. And, um, I dealt with the funeral arrangements. I mean, it was just a whole bunch of stuff that came into play. Um, I cried like crazy. I lost a lot of weight. I went from like 154 to like 140 in the, and under. Um, so I started to do a lot of um, research online to see, you know, what happened here. And I came across um, a group of women who basically suffered second trimester losses due to incompetent cervix. Um, just to let y'all know, I didn't even know what incompetent cervix was until I met this last OB that basically told me what happened to my daughter. And then when, when he saw the cervical change at 14 weeks, this is when we realized, yes, I do in fact have an incompetent cervix. So there was a doctor that was like a specialist that was there and she just basically asked me how many pregnancies did I have and I told her I had a DNC, um, 
November 2012, and that um, I also lost my daughter September um, 2013 um, due to uh, um, incompetent cervix, and then, I, then, of course, this particular pregnancy. She said that she feels that it's because I had back-to-back -back pregnancies. But I was thinking in my mind, like, hell no. Like, no, for real. Even if I had back-to-back -back pregnancies, I know chicks that go out here and get knocked up like it's nothing, and they carry full-term. This was not supposed to happen. And I, and so when I spoke to my OB, he basically said, and I asked him with my follow-up appointment, would this happen again? He said, yeah, because I have an incompetent cervix, and it's a short cervix on that. So, of course, I did all my research, and I, I asked him about the TAC procedure, which is a transdominal surplage when they have to put it on your, um, they basically would have to, you could get it done laparoscopically or, um, a traditional, which is like a C-section. And he basically said, um, yes, he does recommend me to do it, but he does not perform the surgery in which I was totally fine. Cause I want somebody that's a little bit more experienced because they're dealing with my cervix here. So, um, there was two particular doctors that, that stood out that a lot of these ladies really um, recommend and they just praise these particular doctors. And that's Dr. Hannity, Hannity, which is in Chicago, and Dr. Davis, which is in New Jersey. Um, I spoke to Dr. Davis, which is in New Jersey, and I am now scheduled to get my transdominal surclage placed on me on June the 6th. Um, and that would be two months after my loss or whatever. Um, so that's where I stand right now. That's what's really been going on. Um, am I nervous about it? Heck yeah, I'm nervous. But you know what? At the same time, I'm like, I just lost two perfectly healthy babies. And these are my snooting not mootens right here. These are my babies. I lost them due to an incompetent cervix. And there is no way in heck that I'm going to try to even think about getting pregnant until I can find some type of, um, some, something that can be done. And I know nothing is guaranteed, but if this means that I have to go and get this procedure done, then so be it. Um, so that's where I stand. Um, it was really hard and it's still hard right now. Sometimes I just be thinking like, damn, I'm supposed to be pregnant right now. Or dag, I'm supposed to have like a three month and a half right now. Or dag, I'm supposed to have a toddler uh, uh, right now. But it just didn't happen. And so I wanted to just basically give awareness to a lot of women out there who have suffered suffered multiple um second trimester losses i mean it's devastating especially like when you have everything planned i had everything planned for august like i just knew when my daughter was gonna be here it was gonna be on and popping y'all like she was gonna be so spoiled yeah so um the morning was really i mean morning it was just really really bad sometimes i would you know it it, it felt like it just didn't happen because i was still mourning for melody it just feel like it's just not real. And, um, and I just had to deal with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you know, especially when you're dealing with postpartum, you know, your milk supply come in. That was horrible. My, my breast swelled up like Dolly Parton and, um, I, you didn't have no baby to breastfeed. And then there's just like, why did this have to happen to me? And then when I had to go back to pick up her birth certificate at the hospital, I was on the level where all of the women were having these babies. So it was just like, oh my goodness, like this just cannot be happening right now. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm, you know, I'm okay. I mean, I'm still breathing, you know, I ain't about to go out here and start acting crazy and committing suicide and stuff. But, um, I am heartbroken by it because I really wanted my baby and I really wanted to be pregnant right now. And I wanted to see my belly grow and feel the kicks and just enjoy being pregnant. And it was just took it from me. It was just like, really? Like, for real? Um, you know, when we, me and my husband left out of the hospital, they wanted me to stay another day. But I was like, no, I, I think my left side of my leg was still numb. We hurried up and got out of there. Um. I cried day and night all throughout the day. Couldn't stop my tears from falling to the point that my tears couldn't even produce tears anymore. So, I'm just, I want to get this, this particular procedure done, procedure done because it gives me closure. I mean, 
I'm going to always miss my children. I'm going to always miss my baby girls. But it just lets me know, okay, if them passing away was to basically let me know that there was something going on with my cervix and so be it. I think once you experience one loss, that's good enough to basically get the procedure done. Again, nothing is guaranteed and every pregnancy is different. But I had no idea of what an incompetent cervix was. I had no idea what prom was because my water broke when I was on with this last pregnancy and it never broke with Melody. So I had no idea what that was. Um, I had no idea that there were like three other different particular surfages out there. I had no idea what the percentage rate of a uh, stitch was because, you know, my sister got the stitch. So I assumed like, okay, bet I'm in there. Once I get the stitch, oh, it's going down, you know. But reality hit and... My dreams were set, shattered, and it just didn't happen the way that I wanted it to happen. Um, so, that's where I'm at right now. So, now instead of me kissing my hand twice, I kiss it three times for three of my babies that are with the Lord right now. And it sucks. It kicks rocks, man. It's the worst feeling in the whole world. Um... To lose a baby like that, to lose something so precious, so innocent, and um, you know, to to lose it, it was just it was just crazy, and to have to go and endure and um, hold this baby and comfort this baby till this baby passes on, it was just um, it was bad. It with a with cap letters bad it was horrible i would not wish this on any woman not even an enemy i i cannot stress how horrible it was so if you have experienced a loss i know exactly how you feel um so i had joined this abaloopers.com to just um educate myself about this this tact procedure i spoke to the doctors i also saw women who went on to have successful pregnancies after getting this particular um procedure done one lady just announced that you know within six hours she's on her way to actually get um to have a c-section to deliver a healthy baby boy after suffering so many losses and there's so many women on there who are brave enough to talk about it because you you can't, if you've never been through it, then you don't understand it. You understand what I'm saying? I can't relate to somebody that has not gone through what I went through. Um, family and friends have been very supportive. Um, it was, you know, it was, it was a trial time and it still is. And, you know, August is not even here yet. So who knows how it's going to be Mother's Day was okay. Um, the first thing I saw when I woke up was a rose and a, a beautiful blue card from my husband. And um, that was really good. Um, today, um, while I was at work, I saw a lady who was walking with a baby in her carrier. And I said, oh, can I see? And she said, yeah. And I went over and looked. And then she had a little Newton Norton, her little newborn baby just sucking on his little pacifier, chilling. And I was like, he is so adorable. How old is she? And, he, and she was like, he's only a week. And I was like, oh, just a week. Um, so, you know, the only thing I can do, honestly, is just pray and go. And I've been making myself so busy that when I come, I'm talking about from rearranging things to decorating things to finishing proposals so just trying to stay busy but as soon as i finish it i'm like what's next i am so longing to hear a baby cry to hear the patter of little feet laughter of babies and you know i just want that experience so i really wish that wouldn't have happened to my daughters i really wish i could have changed the hands of time but it's like water that falls on ground you can't pick it back up and there's nothing I can do about it and um I tried with this pregnancy but the simple fact is that I have I see incompetent cervix and what incompetent cervix means is bottom line your cervix starts to open up before the baby is even supposed to come before nine months so 
that's where the prom comes in. That's where your water breaks because you're, um, the way I look at it, the way my doctor explained it to me is that when that starts to happen, it triggers this off, which basically says, okay, the baby's ready to come. She came too soon and it was devastating. It was heartbreaking. My mother was there. My husband was there. Um, it was horrible. It was horrible. I can't even explain how horrible it is. But I'm going to move forward. I'm going to get this procedure done. Um, some women have gotten pregnant right away after having this talk and carry full term. There's still a little percentile of it. I think the success rate with that is like 96 to 97% rate. And um, I'm just praying that I'm in the... In the positive percent, right? I'm so tired of coming home without a baby. I'm so tired of hearing, I'm sorry for your loss. I am I am tired of um, watching my children suffer like that. I'm tired of my husband having to be strong because he doesn't want to, you know, he's trying to hold his family together. Um, it's hard for me to imagine having a baby of I mean, I can imagine it, you know, but it's hard when you've never had it or you get this close and then it was just taken away. So that's what you see. So I'm hoping and praying that when I get this procedure done that, you know, in the near future, I will have a successful pregnancy. When will we start again? I have no idea. I know I'm not starting anytime soon because I'm still mourning. And when I was pregnant with Harmony, I mourned for Melody. I cried a lot with her. I thought about her so much um, that I didn't really give myself time. And now I'm mourning for three babies within the last two weeks, two years. And um, I know people say things change once you get your rainbow baby. I'm hoping to experience that. I'm hoping to experience that. So I just wanted to let you ladies know um, what I've been doing, what I've been up to, and just give you a brief summary. Congratulations for all of the women who are pregnant that got their BFPs and that are progressing each week. I am rooting you on. And for the women who experience these losses, it's, this is a bad man jamma right here. This, this right here, it does something to your soul. It just knocks you down. But you got to keep getting up. You uh, you know, no matter what the outcome will be, you have to strive and you just have to um, keep your sanity because it can, it, it can depress you. And a lot of women talk about postpartum, but I'm going to tell you postpartum. Postpartum is when you come home without a baby. Postpartum is when your breasts feel like you're exploding. Postpartum is when you're dealing with hemorrhoids hanging out your tail. Postpartum is having to go back to the doctors and the hospitals and see other women pregnant and you're supposed to be right there. Postpartum is when you're crying and you're bleeding at the same time. Postpartum is for real. And that's just my experience of it. I'm not knocking the regular postpartum of what, you know, happens because, you know, I have an older sister and, you know, she had four babies and she kind of had to back to back and all of her babies were healthy she went full term but she really suffered in her postpartum to the point that they had to diagnose her with whatever but um that's just my experience like I, I i would if i could take regular postpartum c-section and all fine just as long as i have a baby to show all of the 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 pain that i'm going through to bring home a healthy baby and um that's another thing too when i get this procedure done because it's permanent i mean you can get it removed but because they place it um high above your cervix well within your cervix area you have to get a C-section done in order for them, in order for you to deliver, in which I am perfectly fine. Y'all remember, I used to be a huge advocate of natural this, natural that. I'm going to tell you something. I understood when I was in labor with um, this last pregnancy with my daughter, Harmony, why people get um, those epidurals. That stitch was holding my cervix from opening, so it was just, it, it was bad. I was like, just give me the drugs. 
it was so bad he had to give me um they had to wait for that little salt water bag to go down and saline to go into my IV before they could do the epidural so my doctor went ahead and told them to put give me morphine and so they gave me morphine so I was in there drugged but I could still feel it so once they gave me the epidural I was like okay and then I just braced myself for what I was going to have to deal with and the heartaches and all of that other stuff for seeing my daughter go So, I hope I sum that up, and um, I'm going to keep you guys posted on my whole tax journey of becoming a tax sister, and until then, ta-ta for now. Shot to chest me, Joe. Joe, I'm off my melody. Arose, we the song of this world. Get back.